we learned it from uh, China, we learned it from South Korea, we learned it from Italy, you know, we knew what's going to happen. We lose one nurse, one doctor from this virus. We're going to lose a chance to save thousands of people. We've got to do something that we can do. It doesn't matter. You know, as I said, that's like, you can stay home, that's fine. But if you can make something, make it to help people. So that's how I started all this. Quickly, a big movement um, by pretty much the maker community, um, realizing that the medical community was going to be running out of uh, PPE, personal protective equipment for them. We never thought about them making a you know, face shield or personal protective gears. And all this uh, coronavirus happened. All of a sudden, we lost access to 3D printers, and that's when we needed them most. And that's the, that's when I like I emailed uh, I emailed my dean like I don't know 8 p.m. and I got a reply right back. And then like within an hour, like everybody's on the same page. It's not there is no I mean, you know there is no you know no race and no color no nothing. So everybody as a human being, we need to you know fight together. Crusoe Research came out with a file for uh, one of these headbands. So they made the file open source and um, released the IP uh, protection of it and pretty much said anyone with a 3D printer should be printing these. So the plastic band goes here and here to post to a hand and then uh, clear plastic shield attached to this uh, four prongs. We uh, joined a group called makeforcovid.co. Pretty much all the universities are a part of it. And then their ties with the hospitals, I think, is what is really important because you can make as much as many things that you think would be helpful, but if the hospitals don't accept it, um, it's kind of a waste of time and energy. And so we've printed about like 120 of them so far. So we're gonna keep on making as many as possible until uh, the need or demand changes. Um, and that's something that's really cool about 3D printing. Uh, that flexibility allows us to um, kind of close in stop gaps of supply chain. If they do get overwhelmed and they need ventilator splitters all of a sudden, like we have thousands of people in armies that in a day can be printing that file instead of these now. It's been really nice and rewarding to be able to come back and use the skills that I have to be able to help as opposed to just kind of getting being stuck in my house with twiddling my thumbs. Um, so my day to day has actually been kind of normalized again. I'm here alone. Um, most of the time, but it's nice to be using um, kind of the skills and the tools that we have to be able to help the medical community. You know, no one is safe from this. And it's not something, you know, I'm doing this for myself. I'm doing this for my family. I have family, you know, my son, my daughter here. And so I'm doing this for my family members, my friends. I have friends, older friends. So um, that's, you know, I had, I didn't think much, just I had to jump right in, I had to do it. So I knew I, I know I can make like this small change, but I should do it. Really hope this we can fix, we can actually end this soon. So I'm, I'm so glad, you know, thankful for my school, allow me to actually use our equipment and then supporting 